Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, we're talking about uh, warfare. We're talking about uh, what it means to deal with the tactics of Satan and to be able to put him in his place. When Satan comes and he tries to build a stronghold in your life, he will generally start with a foothold, which means he will try and distract you. He'll try and deter you from what God has called you to do or what God has called you to be. And his greatest tool is that of just distraction to make you think there might be just something more important than what you believe you have been called to. And he sometimes will come to you, as we said yesterday, by throwing mud at you. And he'll come and he'll try and he'll throw your past in your face and he'll try and lay guilt on you and make you shameful. And he'll try and tell you what a failure you've been in the past and you're never going to be the same again. And he's just throwing mud. Now there's a couple of ways to deal with a mud-throwing devil and one of them is through just the beautiful tactic of, of, of prayer. Prayer is a tool of warfare. We sometimes think that, think that prayer is just something we do so that we can worship God and get God to do stuff and be part of our lives and that's a small part of it. But prayer is a great weapon in your hands if you know how to use it. Now, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, Satan tried his tactics and he came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, what do you think you're doing here? Why are you putting yourself through all of this stuff? Why don't you just go back to heaven? You don't have to go through all that you know you're going to go through. You don't have to put yourself through the pain of the cross and the suffering and all this kind of stuff. Jesus, just go home. And do you really think that the blood of one man, even if it be you, can cleanse the world from all the sin that I've got them into? Jesus, you're fooling yourself. It's never going to work. Jesus didn't argue with him. Jesus didn't try and debate with him. He just simply prayed. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, with all the anguish and the pain and that which he knew he was about to suffer fully in his mind, he just prayed simply this prayer. He said, Lord... Let your will be done. As a human being, in the human flesh, he had his own will. But when he subjected his will to the will of God, Satan had no answer. It's a beautiful aspect of what prayer warfare is all about. If you look for an Old Testament example, you can look at Moses. As he's walking through the wilderness on his way to the promised land, they come across this formidable enemy of Amalekites, just uh, many, many of them. And as he has to fight with them to make his way through the, the wilderness to get where he was going, he, uh, he embarked upon prayer warfare. He said to Joshua, Joshua, you're going to have to fight this battle and it's going to take place in this valley. And this is where you will have to stand with our mere meager little army against the might of this great force. Joshua, you have to fight in the valley. And I can see Joshua saying, yeah, Moses, that's cool. But so exactly what are you going to be doing? And Moses said, no, I'm going to be exercising the greatest aspect or the greatest tool of warfare against Satan. I'm going to be up there on the mountain. And I'm going to take Aaron and her and we're going to go up there and we're going to be praying for you. And I'm thinking, surely, if I were Joshua, I'd say, hey, my Mo Moses, I'd rather go to the mountain and you fight in the valley. And Moses went up on the mountain. And you know the story so well. As he was praying, Aaron and Hur lifted his hands when he was tired. And he prayed. And while his hands were raised in prayer and worship toward God, he looked down in the valley and there was Joshua winning the fight. But as soon as his hands became tired or maybe he was distracted, then all of a sudden the enemy were overtaking Joshua. And he made the connection, which is a connection we have to make, man. We have to make the connection that the battle is fought in the valley, but it is won on the hilltop of, of prayer. Now, if you like me or if you know me a little bit, you know that I, I, I'm a valley guy. I like to be down in the valley and doing stuff and and uh, being active and doing all those kind of things. But I'm so grateful. <laughs> I am so grateful that we have people on the hill of prayer. We have Eileen, we have other people who, who pray desperately for us who are in the valley. And let me tell you, that's where the battle is won. It's not won in the field of the valley of the battle. It's won on the hill of prevailing prayer. So we need to pray more 
and maybe we won't have to fight so much. I hope that this will be a lesson to us. In your life, we want to fix stuff, we want to do stuff, we want to make things happen. I understand that, and there are people that, can, that we need to, to do that kind of thing. But without the people of prayer, we go nowhere. I hope you find that to be true in your own life as well. God bless you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.